Hey, welcome to this third video on how to create a website. In the first one, if you do remember, we learned how to create the website layout using header, navigation bar, content and right panel. In our second video, we've added content looking mainly at how to add the different pictures, the logo, the buttons um, and some pictures in the right hand side and how to add text. So I've added a bit more text now and this video is going to focus on how to customize the look and feel of my text. Okay. Um, if you look at my code so far, I've got a heading one for the welcome to Aquapark and then I've got three paragraphs using the P tag for those three paragraphs here. And looking at my code, um, I will find this HTML at the bottom of the page here. In my page content, I'm looking here at the H1 tag, which is my title, and then the three paragraphs are over there. Now you looked at it and you saw that the heading one was actually yellow and the text was white. Now this is because of CSS. Okay, so we've got an H1 here and it's only in the page content. So if I look at my CSS, which is at the top of my page, you can see here the CSS definition for H1. Um, I only have one attribute here, which is color, and this is the color code for yellow. And that's what's make my heading in yellow. Now we're going to look at other properties we could add here um, to change more than just the color of the text. Um, the paragraphs, I didn't put any P tag here, but I'm going to add one and later on I'm going to put some properties here. Um, but basically it was using the color of the page content, which is one of the div tags. So if I look up the page content here, you can see that it was using a white color. Um, and that's why the paragraphs, the three paragraphs were in white. Okay. Now let's investigate other properties we can use to customize our headings. And to do so, we're going to use my blog. Um, and we're going to look at a blog post called styling text using CSS. Okay. So, um, basically remember the syntax of CSS, uh, we've got the selector and in this case it will be either H1 or P, which will refer to the HTML tag. And then we can set as many properties as we want and we can set the values. So far we've only used one, which is the color property and we set it to yellow or to white. But you can see here, we're going to investigate how to change the font family, the font size, so the size of the text, the font weight, if we want the text to appear in bold, the style, if we want to make the text italic, for instance, the text decoration, if we want to underline the text, uh, we're going to look at adding shadow as well. Okay, and you will find out that there are thousands, well, maybe not thousands, but um, dozens of properties you can use in CSS to change the text. And you can find some more on this website here, which is really good for that. Um, now, what I've done is um, to show you a little bit what we can do is I've created five headings here, heading 1A, B, C, D, and E. And look at how different these headings are. Now, if I look at the HTML for that, my HTML is fairly straightforward. I've got my heading 1A, B, C, D, and E. Um, and I've applied a different class for all of these headings. Now looking at the actual code, uh, the CSS code, sorry, um, you can see here all the properties I've been using to change things like the font from Arial in heading one to Trebuchet in heading two. So these are the types of properties we're going to be able to use for our code. So for instance, uh, what you may want to do is actually say, which of those headings do you like? You may want to copy the whole code for it. So if I like heading 1B, I'm going to copy the whole code um, and you can add that to your website. And then later on, you will be able to change some settings, especially things like colors, for instance, to match the color of your website. So I'm going to use this one here. I quite like heading 1B. I think it would look neat on my website. So I'm going to copy this section here and I'm going to put it into my color definitions for H1, my CSS definitions, sorry, for H1. So I'm going to paste this here. Um, and I already have the color, so I'm going to remove the color here because I was happy with my yellow color for this. Okay, let's save this 
and let's refresh my web page to see the impact this is having on my website. Uh, reload. Here we go. Uh, you see how the font has changed and then I've got this border color here uh, which is dashed and red. Now I really don't like this so I'm going to change this. Uh, looking at my properties here border bottom 2 pixel so that's how thick the line is, line is dashed yeah that was fine and then I'm going to make it white so I'm going to change this to white remember you can use a website called colorpicker.com to find all the colors you need um, the font is italic I'm actually going to revert back to Arial for that um, heading um, I think it would look better so here we go I've changed a couple of properties and my text will now be yellow with a white line underneath let's see how it looks on my website I'm going to reload this website yeah I think it looks a lot better here I'm going to leave it like that I think it looks quite cool and I'm now going to look at the P tags okay the three paragraphs I've got here now I do find that on some website like this the text is quite hard to read because it's actually um, the lines are too close to each other so I'd like to increase the line spacing uh, between lines maybe as well increase the font size um, and once again on this blog post here um, which is all about customizing text I've added another section here uh, which shows you how you can change uh, the look and feel of your paragraph you can see on this paragraph I find this a lot easier to read because of the line spacing uh, which in CSS we call that the line height um, has changed here um, so I'm actually going to use that you can see how we've changed the font the color of the font the font size um, the alignment of the text justify means that my text is aligned on both sides and I think that looks quite neat it's a bit like a magazine or a newspaper where text is organized into columns so I'm actually going to copy all of this here um, and I'm going to use that for my website so I'm going to put that remember you have to make sure you are within your style uh, tag when you do CSS okay I did forget to mention this but that's really important so at the bottom of my CSS code uh, I'm going to paste um, what I've just copied okay paste this so it's going to have this I'm going to change the font color to make sure it remains in white because for my website that's what I'm looking for the rest I'm going to leave like this and see what happens so save and let's test it uh, back to my website the aquapark uh, reload the page and here we go I do think that does look more professional um, I may want my text to be a little bit bigger so once again looking at my properties for my p tag 12 points I'm going to make it 14 points um, it's kind of trial and error um, you try different things and once you're happy with it then you can move on so let's reload this yeah 14 might be a bit too big that looks a bit unprofessional now um, so I'm going to make it let's try 13 we haven't tried that so 13 points um, as I said try different things up until um, you like it yeah I'm going to leave it like that I think it looks quite neat um, perfect so um, to sum up um, there are lots of properties you can use CSS properties you can use to customize your text um, you can apply this to both your h1 tags but you can also apply them to your p tag and that's what we've done here so my h1 tag has all those properties my p tag has all those properties from time to time in your CSS it does get messy you may want to make sure that you tidy up your code so for instance I'm going to make sure that everything is indented so it's clear that my h1 starts here and finishes here my p starts here and finishes here you will notice that from time to time things may not work the way you want um, and that's where you have to start troubleshooting or investigating uh, what could happen is that you've missed a bracket like here if I miss that bracket it's going to mess up my CSS definition so check that each of your selector has an opening and a closing curly bracket check that each of your property has a semicolon at the end that's really important try to stick to one property per line and trying to line them up it makes it so more so much easier to to investigate your code okay 
So that's it, I'm done. Uh, that's what I wanted to show you for fonts. Now, to start with, um, there are not that many fonts you can use. Um, you can search the web for other fonts. Um, I will do another video later on, on how to use Google Fonts, where you've got a lot more options. Um, but you can um, use fonts like Arial, like Trebuchet MS, um, and like Tauma, for instance. These are like three fonts you can safely use on web pages because most computers will have those fonts. Okay, perfect. Thanks for watching, and I'll do a few more videos on how to use Google Fonts later on.